Hello everybody, we're here today with another great artist. Everybody, Neve Terley Moon. Hi. Tell me, uh, what do you do musically and how long have you been doing it and mm -hmm. how did you start? Yeah, okay, so I am a singer, songwriter and bedroom producer. Mm -hmm. um, I've been writing music for around five to six years now and... Yeah, I started producing like shortly after, but I wouldn't say that's my like main thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, singer songwriter, I've released quite a few songs and mm -hmm. gig, and then also I go to Lipper. I'm studying there for a BA honors, so mm -hmm. yeah, that's me in a minute. <laughs> I'm always intrigued to know that uh, when was the turning point for um, you as a musician that you decided this is what you want to do because mm -hmm. from the time that um, as a teenager we start to show a lot of interest to a lot of different things to the time that we decide that this is what I want to do yeah there's a bit of a gap or sometimes it just maybe longer or shorter mm -hmm. but was there like in a specific thing that happened in your life that you said okay this is something that I want to do for the rest of my life. Yeah, so it's actually like quite a crazy story. Okay. So when I was in school, I was like, wanted to do very academic stuff. Like I wanted to be a lawyer. So mm. I went to... Um, so that was the initial thought, yeah. that you wanted to be a lawyer. Okay. I always loved music, but I never had the confidence to sing in front of anyone or okay. anything of the sort. Um, so I didn't get enough GCSEs to do the courses that I wanted. So like just pick one on the side. I was with my dad, and he's a musician. And he was like, mm. why don't you just pick music? Like, just do it. I know you love it. I know you're shy with it, but just go for it. Mm. And then, like, two years later, I ended up scrapping law and criminology and just sticking with music. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it took me to fail at some GCSEs, mm. not get my desired courses to go down the route of music. I think, like, my life has literally led me down that path. Wow, so you moved from being a lawyer... To being a musician. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> Big shift. So how, how long did you did you study, did you say, law? Yeah, I did. Why? How long did you study? Um, a year. But, a year. And then, I, yeah, I did criminology as well. So what happened in between? So did you, like, do, like, did you sing for an audience that you saw the reaction, mm. that you thought, okay, wow, I'm getting a good reaction. I think this is what I, what I got to do. I just, like, really fell in love with it. Like, the course and, like, I literally thank my teachers from that college mm -hmm. every day because they like helped me and guided me so much um mm -hmm. but yeah it was like I just loved it and I remember doing my first gig I was so nervous I was shaking but after it that feeling I had I was like oh this is what I want to be doing mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't sit in a classroom like writing all day I want to be up singing and mm -hmm. being active in music so yeah mm -hmm. so putting yourself in a position to try things out mm -hmm. made you realize that this is something that you really want to do. I think that that's a very interesting and important thing for us as a human being to just yeah. make sure that we have to try. Yeah. So you told me that your dad is a musician. Yeah. So what does he do and any other family member who is a mm -hmm. musician? Um, well, my mom was an actress, but my mm -hmm. dad, um, yeah, he plays guitar. He's really good. <laughs> mm -hmm. And he sings. So I grew up as a kid, always listening to music with my dad and my mom. But um, he was like very into folk and country kind of music, mm -hmm. blues. So um, I grew up on that, like in the car, listening to the country CDs. Um, I loved music. I would say like it stemmed from my dad, but I just never had the confidence until I went down the route in college. So... Yeah, but my dad pushed me as well mm. to go down that route. How important do you think that is to have that kind of a support mm. from a family who is musical as well? I think it's so important because so many people have a tendency to not think that being a musician is a serious career. Mm. Like parents push their kids to, you know, go and do these academic things. And I don't think it's like right. You're putting someone into a box um, and like... Yeah, I think it's really important to have someone who supports you and believes in what you're doing. If it's your passion, then you should like wholeheartedly go and get it. And mm. um, you shouldn't have to like be forced to do something because your parents say otherwise. So yeah, I think mm. it's really important. So what was your parents' reaction? Did they say, go get a nine to five job or <laughs> we just do whatever you want to do, we support you 100%? How, what was the reaction? Yeah, I'm really lucky. Like my parents like, will support you 100%. Especially when I... I made this decision I wanted to go to Lippa in um, college so my mum like really wanted to go because my mum's from Liverpool so 
she wanted me to go back to Liverpool and studying mm. in like an art school which she she went to like arts college and stuff and my dad did um so they just like I don't think they fulfilled their dreams and they like kind of regretted it mm. so they're seeing that I'm doing something they wanted to do and they're like yeah go and do it oh yeah they don't hold me back whatsoever they're mm. very supportive do you tie yourself to one specific genre um, mm. when you want to write or when you want to produce mm. or is it something that you open your open your mind mm. to like new experiences and let those influences just come to you and just let's just create something how does it happen i definitely don't follow i try not to follow a route like whatever i write i've like wrote so many different genres and it's mm. like I don't want to put myself in a box right now and say mm-hmm. I'm just an R&B artist because I love R&B, I love soul, I love indie pop, mm-hmm. like all of these, I love folk, country, like, but I feel like I take all influences and put them into my own music, so I don't know, it's just like a bit of a mix up, but mm-hmm. I don't put myself in this specific genre. Do you play any instrument as well? I play a bit of guitar, <laughs> not very well. <laughs> yeah, I'm teaching myself. So do you think it's important to be able to play an instrument to be a musician? Mm. I think it depends. If you're in an environment where you're around like-minded people who are musicians and you've got access to like collaborations, then not as much. Because when mm. I was in, like back in Shropshire, where my parents are from, I was working with a guitarist called um, Josh Ward and he's amazing. And I didn't have to play at that point. Then I kind of mm. like came into the big world and I was like, oh shit, I've got no one mm. to like play for me now. So. Yeah, I've had to pick it up a bit myself, but I think it just depends on your environment. That's actually a very good point. Yeah. It really depends where are you. Yeah. Like, are you surrounded by a musician? You might not need to Yeah. Uh, know, like, a lot of other skills. Mm-hmm. But as you said, I think these are, like, tools in your toolbox. Yeah, It's yeah. good to have them. Definitely. So if you need them, you can just take it out of your toolbox yeah, and yeah, use yeah. it and put it back there. If you had a choice to mm. choose between releasing one song a year which is a really good quality song Mm -hmm. or an album a year quality wise might not be that great but obviously the message is the message Mm -hmm. that you want to just communicate with your audience which one would you choose i'd pick the more releases (laughs) more releases yeah just because why i I don't like striving for perfection i don't think you can Mm. find perfection everyone's got a different idea of it i'm not gonna sit there for like a year like work and like keep like changing things like it needs to be good at some point if I did that then it would never be good enough I would never have released anything because mm. I would nitpick too much sure so I think like if it's true to you true to your sound true to what you feel release it people if people like it people like it if they don't they don't but it, it depends like you don't I do it for myself I do music for myself so yeah it's mm. I'd rather do that especially if I've got like because I've released I've released demos do you know what I mean so mm-hmm. like I, I haven't waited for them to be perfect in mm. every way like production wise and I'm fine with that consciously yeah I 100% agree yeah right but my subconscious all the time I think that might be uh, the thing with a lot of people that you always go back to your production and start tweaking around with it. Oh, this let's just just do this. Let's yeah. just add this reverb and let's just add this EQ to it yeah. and see what happens. And uh, that so-called perfectionist, I think, is some kind of a um, I don't know what, how, how can I say it. Not really as a disease, but it just eats you inside yeah. out. I think to be perfectionist. Yeah, like I think as people like in the arts like world. We do. We're like our worst critics are ourselves. Do you know oh, what I mean? 100%. So we're always gonna like be like, no, something can change. There, something can be better. Like, I think in that sense, maybe take a step back, let someone else listen to it, and see their opinion for the first time, and that'll give you a completely different insight. Because I've gone to bed, just produced something, and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm really happy that woke up, put it on my headphones, and I'm like, oh, what's that? Like, I hate it. Start like deleting everything, but. Yeah, I think let someone else listen to it, get a different opinion from like someone who hasn't heard it before, and then yeah, see the reaction to that mm. and go off that. I was talking to another artist, and she actually said something very interesting because mm. um, I told you how my thought process works, mm. and she was telling me what you can do, or uh, she was saying that what I do myself 
is that I release those songs. I still have all of my work, for yeah. example, all the writings, all the demos that I make, but I release them in different forms, mm. in different platforms. For example, if something that I'm not really happy with, or I don't want to really carry on finishing that song, mm. I release maybe that 20 seconds of it yeah. on TikTok, yeah, yeah, yeah. or I do an Instagram reel. Yeah. But I put the one that I'm really happy with, mm. uh, like on Spotify and all the other, like a streaming platform and yeah. I found that really interesting but I 100% agree with you in a sense that as a human being we have to make mistakes to go forward yeah definitely. if we um, let's just say we're making a song tomorrow is going to be definitely better than today mm -hmm. but we have to make that compromise say, okay there should be some kind of a deadline yeah like by the end of the month we're going to put it out no matter what mm -hmm. otherwise tomorrow and <laughs> tomorrow is always going to be better yeah and that, i think that's that's a challenge yeah, yeah, yeah it's a challenge do you feel that there is any kind of pressure from music industry that you have to say certain things or mm -hmm. you have to look in certain way or you have to behave in certain way yeah, definitely. definitely. I think it's got like the TikTok era has made this like so much more mm -hmm. prevalent in the music industry. Like you constantly have to be active, constantly posting, constantly making content. And it's like, it's not always there. Like you're not always in that creative headspace. Sometimes you get writer's blocks, sometimes you get creative blocks. So it's mm -hmm. like there is a pressure to constantly be doing stuff and posting. And I think that can have quite a negative impact on certain people. Hmm. Mm. How do you deal with them? How do you deal with that pressure? Mm. What do you do about it? Like I don't know. Like to be fair, that's one thing that I've really start, like I've I've struggled with definitely. Like the pressures of always needing to create content. But if I'm going through it and I'm like I really just need a break, I'll just come off Instagram for a bit and just mm. takes time for myself. And then when I come back and I'm refreshed and I'm, I'm back in a creative like mindset. Mm. So I think yeah, just take a little bit of time. Don't feed into like this pressure of constantly needing to create stuff mm. if it's not there like there's no need <laughs> so is there anything that you do for example you say that i want to put put away my phone i want to go for a walk yeah, or i want to yeah. meditate or i want to go to gym or yeah what are your ways of dealing with it yeah i definitely think exercise is so important mm -hmm. being around like friends and family and just like clearing your mind but yeah exercise i'd say is like it shouldn't be important to mm -hmm level out the stress <laughs> mm. yeah 100 was there any sacrifices or something that you consider as a sacrifice mm. in your journey that you're doing that you say okay i've made these sacrifices mm. to be where i want to be in 10 years mm. as a musician mm. um i don't i couldn't really think of like a big sacrifice but mm -hmm. you know, like little things like when your friends are going out drinking, you're, not you're going like, out. Yeah. "Yeah, I'm gonna sit. I'm gonna stay in tonight and try and write some music mm -hmm. or produce like the little sacrifices." But I wouldn't say massive, ones, massive stuff. Yeah. But I think, in a sense, maybe sacrifice is not really the right terminology for it. Mm -hmm. But I think these are the things that y you have to do as a musician mm -hmm. to be somewhere that you want to be in 10, 20 years time. Yeah. So, have you studied music? Yes, I've studied... Um, what major did you study? Um, I do a BA, BA honours in songwriting and performance at the minute. Songwriting and performance. Yeah, and I did a music diploma in college as well. Mm -hmm. Extended diploma. <laughs> do you think like studying music helped you to be a better musician? And in what way? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> like, definitely. you get so many... It's obviously not free. You have to pay for university. Mm -hmm. But you get studio time that you wouldn't... Opportunities, yeah. yeah and sure. like... The, teachers help you like that's what they're there to do so if you need advice you can go to them and it's like really reassuring you're around like-minded people there's so many different people to collaborate with whether that's dancers for a music video or producers like sound engineers like they're all there it's so accessible to you so i think like if you can and you want to go into education then it's definitely worth it mm -hmm. because You've just got everything at your fingertips, basically. Mm. So how do you collaborate? If you want to col find collaborators mm. and find people who you want to work with as a sound engineer, mm. co-writer, producer, how do you find them? Well, I would contact either 
email or Instagram. Mm-hmm. If they're like from my university, for example, then I can email them. But if not, then via Instagram, just send them a message and be like, hey, this is my stuff. Like, if you're interested in working with me, then let me know and send them your ideas for whatever it is if they want to work with you. Mm, just be straightforward yeah. and be open. Yeah, definitely. And just go for it and try. You will never know. Yeah. And this person might just say yes, you know. Yeah. I agree 100%. Do you have a mentor? So obviously the definition of a mentor can mean something different mm. for everybody, right? But a mentor in this case that mm. we're referring to is someone who you look up to mm. and someone who has achieved mm. what you want to achieve. Yeah. And for, so whenever you have like a question regarding to your career, you would be able to mm. go to that person mm. and ask for advice. Yeah. I mean, like... Again, going back to university, there's teachers there have been like in the professional music industry for like years. So there's certain teachers that you'd go to for advice to mm. me because they know exactly what they're talking about. Mm. And I'd say, yeah, that's probably someone I'd go to as a mentor. Do you have plan B? So if plan A doesn't work, <laughs> which I'm not really suggesting, yeah, yeah, yeah. but we want to just th- see how. Does it happen in your mind? And what's your thought process? Yeah. So if plan A doesn't work, do you have plan B? Yes. But okay. that's because I've done certain projects, um, music-based though, um, with like young kids and stuff. So I did like a knife crime project. So it was like raising awareness on knife crime. Okay. Um, and that was like one of the most rewarding things I've ever done. I loved it so much. So if things didn't go right, I'd love to like teach music or mm. not not volunteer but like work with like youth services and stuff doing the art side of things I'd love mm. to do that if you know my career didn't skyrocket mm. or whatever I want to just see what's going on and why people choose plan B mm. I'm interested and intrigued so wh- where does that plan B come from mm-hmm. why why is it coming from a place that you would say, I might not make it, so mm. I gotta have a plan B, or is it come from a place that you would say, I'm, I'm open uh, in terms of like choosing my career as long as I'm doing something that's connected or have some kind of connection with music, mm. I'm happy to do it, and that makes me happy. Yeah, I'd say that. But at the same time, like, I don't really think about not making it mm. like I just don't like to manifest that kind mm. of stuff okay but I've obviously because I've done the work I'm like I do love doing that as well and it's mm. still doing music so it's connected mm. to what I love so yeah it's a plan b but it's not I don't know it's not really an option mm. for me. No, <laughs> yeah. this is actually very interesting I've uh, I've talked to a lot of musicians and uh, a lot of them they wouldn't really call it a plan B, yeah. Uh, but because it's still related to music and because everybody's got the passion mm. uh, for music as long as they have some kind of a deep connection with yeah. music and they can create some kind of value, yeah. they're happy to follow that path. Mm-hmm. So where is plan A? So where do you want to see yourself in 20 years? Where is that plan A? I'd love a record signing deal like that would be ideal um, probably with Universal or something like that mm-hmm. um, I just want to be gigging like making music and be really successful in doing so like earning good money from it mm-hmm. um, like I look up to like Georgia Smith and those kind of artists that's the avenue I'd want to go down you told me that you released four songs mm-hmm. have you had any release strategy that you've mm-hmm. done something before it mm. um this is where i'm like what what i'm working more towards mm-hmm. um is like working on the promotion and all side of things but um i mean my most previous release i did do quite a bit because i had like dancers involved with videos so i had like little snippets and clips that i could upload tiktoks i was doing and mm. things like that i like planned to post something like or like a few things each week um and it definitely got more traction from doing that so mm-hmm. i think it's definitely worth so have you done yeah. something that really worked that you say okay i've done this and this and this and like mm. i got a lot of exposure out of this video 
if you want to give TikTok TikTok <laughs> okay mm. honestly like that's probably where I've gained the most from it, it seems like it's one of the most powerful yeah promotional and marketing tools especially for musicians nowadays yeah it's crazy yeah. how much it's like blown off it is it mm. is it is actually very interesting so tell me about some of the challenges that you had mm. in your musical career mm. if you want to name a few challenges mm. what would they be well i've I suffer with anxiety so mm -hmm. I mean it's never easy when you get up on stage and you've got like you're already anxious but then you've got actual anxiety on top of that it's like mm -hmm. it makes it 10 times harder okay um but that's something that I've really had to push myself through and like I want to do it when I'm watching other people doing it and then before I get on the stage I'm like no I don't want to do it but mm. forcing myself to do something I don't want to do in that moment is like made the world of a difference um, but that was definitely a struggle, like getting up on stage and sinking. It was like I was a ball of nerves. Like, it was terrible, <laughs> mm. but it's eased like over the years. Um, Is it any techniques that you use? For example, I've seen some people have like a band yeah. that just they do this to just distract the attention, mm -hmm. or maybe they just talk to themselves internally yeah. to convince. What do you do? What's your solution to it? Um, firstly, like say on the day of a gig, I just try and do like opposite things so I don't think constantly about like I'm not obsessed performance with performance itself yeah. okay. so like push out one or you know go for a walk do something to try and like distract your mind mm. and then also before it like breathing techniques I think are so important mm -hmm. like Wim Hof breathing that's something Ooh, that I love Wim Hof breathing. yeah <laughs> I love Wim Hof yeah breathing. I think it's amazing for like calming your nerves and anxiety um, so yeah I'd advise that definitely I'm trying to understand what's that uh, fine line that separates a musician who follow music as a hobby mm. to, a mus to a musician that follows music as a career professionally. Mm. Mm. Where, where is that fine line? Oh, hard. I think... Some people say that when you like put out songs out there, you are a professional. Mm. Some people say when you're making money out of music, mm. you are a professional musician mm. so what, what 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 do you think i think if you've got clear like goals ahead of you then you're a professional <laughs> like that makes it more professional mm -hmm. if you're just doing it on the side no i'm not on the side i don't know it's hard because <laughs> you could be is. doing it at like weddings whatever and get paid for it mm. i guess that makes you professional um mm. but for a hobby i just think if you don't have any like clear goals ahead of you mm -hmm. or like the desire to want to actually do it as a career mm. and it's just a hobby mm. but if you're like oh no I want to do this every day like I'm not going to just keep it on the side then that's a profession mm. I don't think you have to be paid for it in order to yeah. be professional in music yeah, yeah. true true mm -hmm. I think it's a combination of it mm -hmm. it's a combination of a lot of things that come together we'll be back So Neve, take me into your creation process. Mm -hmm. When you want to make a song, how do you do it? What's the very first step mm -hmm. that you take? I usually start with, I'll either go to a piano or guitar, mm -hmm. play some chords, and then if I'm liking what I'm playing, I'll record them, and then just write some lyrics along to it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I kind of just go from there. Like, it's quite a simple process, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, always start with chords first. So you first find the actual vibe sonically. Yes. And yeah. then you write on top of that yeah. so-called uh, beat or piece or song yeah. or loop. And what's what's the next step that you... So let's just say you've came up with an idea. Mm -hmm. How do you develop the idea? Yeah. How do you turn it into an actual song? Yeah, so I have like quite a few like really good friends um that I can collaborate with like mm -hmm. guitarists so if I send them like quite a, I can't play very well so mm -hmm. a basic chord progression or whatever then they'll um send me something back and then I can write over that and then I can put it into like logic and like make a little demo mm -hmm. and then if I like it I mean I have like hundreds of demos okay. and not that I haven't finished them but if I'm like really feeling it in the moment then I might go further to, you know, really produce that and stuff. Mm. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. And when the song is ready, yeah. so you've came up with the idea, mm -hmm. you've recorded some stuff in Logic, mm. and you've sent some stuff back and forth 
with your collaborators mm -hmm. and you turn the actual idea into a song. Yeah. So do you send it to somebody else for mixing, mastering? Do you do mm. it yourself? Recently, well, like since COVID, I've just been doing it by myself. Mm. Um, but I have like a really good friend as well um, called mm. Dan Gonnell, who's an amazing producer. Okay. Um, so, yeah, he's there to mix as well if need be <laughs> if okay. I'm struggling I'll send it to him like can I have some advice because I'm like something's not sounding right you know okay. tell me yeah. <laughs> okay cool but what services do you use to release your song um, DistroKid DistroKid yeah do you think there's anything wrong with music industry that you wish that it should have been different Um. yeah I think the inequality between men and like well female and male artists okay is issue <laughs> yeah men are headlining it mm. say leads fast or red in compared to women that's a big what, why do you think is that i just think that the music industry is run mainly by straight white men so mm. <laughs> they well if women don't want to be sexualized then they can often be pushed away mm. say like girl bands they're told to dress a certain way and they're only like really young and then you'll see a picture of One Direction compared to Little Mix and you're like well they're in tops and jeans and they're in like over sexualized outfits I think mm. if women don't want to go down that route then like management don't like that or yeah labels don't like that so. mm. well I think the thing is it's a bit of a uh, bit of a both Mm. In my perspective, I think um, some part of it depends to me as, um, in this case, a musician that I have to say no to a lot of things. Mm. Even even in life, it happens in life. You know, y you uh, get asked to do a lot of things in life. Mm. You know, our friends and family and um, strangers asks us to do different things in life. Oh, can you do this for me? Can can do that for me? Yeah. But I think that that's one of one part of it at least is me that I have to um, say no to things. Mm. Obviously, there the, the should be like some stuff going on in the industry mm. that might not be, as you said, fair mm. to what's happening. But I think it's it's a bit of a both sides. And one, mm. of it, one side of it is definitely depends on me as an artist that I have to say no to things. Mm. You know, I think it's a choice. Disagree with me if, if you think... No, I agree, in, I agree in that sense that obviously you have to say yes and no to whatever's true to you. But I think, like, even with music, like, like producers and stuff, like, there's so many less female producers in the industry and work with big artists just because they're not being let in by, like, the bosses, like, mm. the men, <laughs> basically. Mm. So I think... Like, it's not just artists, it's mm. like producers, sound techs, like women always face discrimination. Like I've heard from women who've gone to like do sound tech in for like a gig and they've been like, oh, you're singing tonight, like you're just assuming because I'm a female but I'm not a part of the sound tech team. And just little things like that, I think mm. there's an inequality there and the mm. balance is off, which I would love it to be. In my perspective, as a human being, whatever that you do should be rewarded for it. Doesn't mm. matter if you're a musician or a singer, and there should be like uh, any kind of prejudgment mm. before I see somebody in action. Obviously, in case I'm saying me, but not me. I mean, you see somebody in action, mm. you shouldn't really have any kind of a prejudgment because of sex, because of skin color or ethnicity mm. or anything else. Yeah, definitely. If you're up for the job, mm -hmm. if you can do it, great. Let's let's go and do it. Yeah. And it shouldn't be the case of, oh, you, you're this, so no, you mm. can't do it. Or you're less than somebody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree 100%. Have you got any side hustle in your life? So your music is, or music is the only thing that you do? Um, at the minute, music is the only thing. That I've, mm. I've done other jobs, like I've done cleaning, <laughs> kitchen for <laughs> Okay. Things like, you know, you have to get money. At, at some point, you, ha yeah. you have to, as a musician like you, the money's not just going to come from nowhere of so yeah like obviously I've had to take jobs on and things but you get paid good money for gigging so mm. like I'd rather do that than mm. do other jobs at the minute yeah. mm. 
let's say you're in the creation process, mm -hmm. right? And you get stuck in mm -hmm. terms of production or when you're writing the actual lyric. Yeah. What do you do? How do you get out of it? Sometimes I just have to leave it for like a little bit of time. How like, long? One hour? One day? One year? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like a week. Mm -hmm. Like I just sometimes, if you've worked on it that much, like it goes back to when we were saying like tweaking things, like constantly changing it, and then you wake up and you hate it the next day when you loved it the day before. Mm. Like I think sometimes you just need fresh ears and to like literally forget about it a little bit come back to it and be like, okay, now I see what I need to do. Like, mm. I just think that makes time is like precious <laughs> in that way. It really helps. If you weren't a musician, mm -hmm. who would you be? Let's just imagine music does not exist. <laughs> That's hard. Probably doing law. <laughs> law, back to law again. Pro well, chronology. I, put, I did enjoy that, but, you know, my heart wasn't in it. But I think if I didn't find music, then I would have just gone down that route because mm -hmm. there was... Well, that's where I wanted to go for quite a few years. So, yeah, I think if music didn't come to me at that moment in time, then I probably would have gone down that route. Probably not been very happy. Either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you feel sad. Sometimes you feel happy. Sometimes mm. you feel depressed. Yeah. Due to the circumstances that are happening, or some part of it might be biologically, or we might lost somebody. Mm. There are a lot of reasons, right? Yeah. So, how do you deal? With with them how do you deal with those emotions and depression and anxiety and those feelings mm. and what do you do about them i think it sounds like so cliche but it's really important to have people around you that you can talk to and be open about how you're feeling too like and if you've got access to counseling or therapy go for it like 100 percent because it does help like hearing especially from a professional like what you can do to better your mind um mm -hmm. but yeah i'd say like mainly just talking to like friends and family like that really helps me um articulate what i'm feeling and know how to go forward with it but a lot of the time i just have to feel it and like get through it and then it passes do you know what i mean like mm -hmm. not so every day you give yourself great. some time to just go back to normal yeah like okay. if i need like a day in bed I'm not going to beat myself up about I'll have the day in bed because mm. in the long run that's going to be what helps me for the rest of the week do you know what I mean so mm. I think just take time for yourself and like yeah take time out that helps definitely mm. with mental struggles sometimes go easy on yourself yeah. yeah definitely how do you think in 20 years time we're going to consume music can you make a prediction mm. well <laughs> going back to TikTok but like our retention spans have gone like minuscule due oh, to yeah. that app yeah i don't can't remember the exact amount of seconds it is that you engage for but it's like tiny mm -hmm. amounts um so i oh, i couldn't even think but i think it's going to be like tiktok driven mm -hmm. that's when most like artists are coming to light and stuff off that app but i couldn't imagine what we'd be like listening off <laughs> in mm. 20 years it's mad the progression from mm. even when I was young it was like CDs and now oh yeah it's just Spotify and when we're scrolling our attention is like literally like 5-10 seconds yeah right but I mm -hmm. think maybe one of the things that might be good to do maybe just reading books yeah because you're gonna have to sit down <laughs> and just put your focus on it mm -hmm. and don't think about anything you yeah. know yeah I do like to read and mm. like watch films do you think that helps that. yeah definitely but I think it's just scary for, like, the younger generation because they, like, getting gifted iPads for Christmas. So oh, it's yeah. like oh my God. they don't have the chance. I don't know if should I refer it to as a problem or whatever uh, that is happening. Like, if you are very young, like, if you're a teenager and you're looking at social media, TikTok and Instagram, mm. and those people are becoming your influencers, I think... That's, I don't know if that's a good thing. Yeah, it's worrying. I, I don't know if that's a good thing. Yeah, neither do I. I think, mm. especially, like, everything we're exposed to online, it's like, we're not really seeing positives, are we? We're just seeing, like, oh, you need to look this a cer mm. certain way, or you need to have this amount of money, or life's going to be crap, or mm. you need to have this car or this house, and, like, that's what everyone's exposed to constantly. I so much admire 
the artists that um, they have some kind of a contrast yeah, in same. their page mm-hmm. that at the same time as showing like the glory and mm. the fame and all the nice cars and good life yeah. but at the same time they show that when they go to sleep they for example they just uh, wearing the pajamas they just they're normal people yeah. you know what I mean that just shows that they work they're normal people but yeah. if you work hard you might be able to get to that place yeah but that doesn't mean that I'm a perfect person mm-hmm. you know I have a lot of flaws and I'm still a human being yeah and I think that's just that's just admirable yeah I that's agree just... I, thought it, I wish like there was that was like what people see more mm. of rather than like you know the, it's seeing the perfect image yeah. <laughs> yeah I know I agree tell me three things that you want to promise yourself that when you walk out of this podcast mm. that you're gonna do or if it's something that takes a long time to achieve you're gonna start doing it mm. well first thing is this little drop <laughs> promotion <laughs> you know I'm working on an EP so okay get that completed in the next few months mm-hmm. I don't know what month yet but okay yeah I want to get an EP out there okay uh, what else do I want to promise myself I'd love to perform at like a festival Okay. Work towards that. I don't know which festival, but... Okay. Yeah, and... Um, you want to be more active in yeah. terms of, like, performing out there. Yeah, okay. definitely. Um, what else would I want? Get better at producing. Get yeah, better at producing. <laughs> yeah. Practice producing, okay. And three things that you're grateful for in your life. Mm, my friends and family. Okay. <laughs> the fact that I have something that I'm passionate about and get to do it every day mm. and the fact I have a roof over my head and food mm. in my belly yeah I'm grateful for all those things I think it's important to be grateful for the simple things that we have in life you know that taste of the food that we like mm-hmm. to eat or the family member that are um, around us grandparents mm. parents yeah. good friends you know mm-hmm. I think it's uh, it's a it's an absolute bless to be able to be surrounded by them yeah 100% Neve Ternley Moon last words well I'd say if you're ever thinking of following your passions Mm. um, but you're hesitant because you don't want to let other people down then don't listen to that inner critic and go out and get what you want and do what you love because there's no better feeling um and also, I have just joined a new band, so mm, <laughs> I'll okay. be uploading um, gig dates and stuff soon. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, if you want to come and see me live, then feel free. Great. Guys, I'm going to put all the links to her social media down in the description. Make sure you go uh, check out her songs. Click on the links down below and go give her a follow and follow us for some more. Thank you very much for coming. It was (laughs) such a pleasure and we hope to see you again. Yes, thank you. Thank you.